I get four. All right. All right. You have five less than two investigation one solving systems of the form AX squared plus BX plus C equals MX plus B. So, gentlemen, ladies, I've asked my students to draw as many parabolas and lines that intersect as they can using one parabola and one line. Some students are going to come and draw their own. So, Travis, you said you wanted to. Sasha, Michael, Jared, you guys can all draw one. Can I draw the no solution one? I can draw one. Come up here and draw it. Okay. Ah. Nice, Travis. One parabola and one line. Come on, Michael. I had yours ready. Wait, no. This isn't working. No, mine's going to be wrong. No, I'm going to get it wrong. No, I don't know. Okay, look at the look, look at the three we have. Can you guys think of any other ones? Yeah. Okay. Chris, you want to draw one? Greg? Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. Draw your one. 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 Draw can she do like the um? Those oh, not the arrow one, but it's like a curve. Can she do that one? Uh, two curves? Yeah. No, that's that's butterfly. No, not. Michael, you want to draw one more? Not with other two, just one. I don't know if it's right. Two of those. Just one. Yeah. yeah. That's still a butterfly. Oh. Wait, can I draw one branch? Oh, Michael, Michael, draw one. I want to make one that makes you confused. Michael, you should just let me do the question one this early. That's the only way I can do. Yeah. <laughs> I see like three. Right, Jerry, you want to draw one more? I have a question. Three of those are the same. No, I don't want to draw one more. I just got a question. What's your question? Is there a parabola be sideways? No. They, won't, they wouldn't be a function. They yeah. won't pass the vertical axis. Yeah, that was, that's what I was going to say. All right. Talk. So, there's one more time. How many solutions here? Two. two. How do you know? Because five, it goes through five, twice. Five, okay, they intersect five, twice, five, so there's two, 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 two solutions. What about here? None. None. What about here? None. One, two, two, two. 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 Um, what about here? Two. two. So, so far we have two solutions, no solutions, right? So, those are our possibilities. What about this last one that Michael drew? One solution. Two solutions. Two solutions. Okay. One. Now, I realize that when you when you graph these on your calculator, you might get a window that shows the parabola on the line, but you don't see all of it, right? Yeah. But what do we got to know about our parabolas and our lines? They know there's an over there. They go on forever, right? They keep going. Wow. So if we zoomed out on our calculator, it would look like that, right? So how many solutions did, how many solutions did that one really have? Two. two. So we have two solutions and no solutions. Is that it? No. no. What does that one solution look like? Oh, like just through the bottom. Line going straight up and down and it's problem. Well, a line going straight up and down isn't a function. If you go through the bottom of it, like so if I do something like this, no. Travis, yes. okay. Yeah. So how many times does that one hit it? Yeah. Once. So how many solutions does that have? One. So how many different types, how many different situations Three. are there Three. for a parabola and a line? Three. Three. And the number of solutions in each of those situations are one solution, right? Two solutions. And what was the last one, Trent? What was the last one, Michael? No no solutions. Nice radio voice. Right? So, guys, do those make sense? Travis. Okay, do those make sense? Yes. Yeah. All right, so graphically it makes sense. Now let's think about mathematically. Y equals MX plus B. What is that? It's a line, right? So this Y equals MX plus B, this is our line. Right? What's ax squared plus bx plus c? It's a parabola. Okay. So mx plus b is a line, gentlemen. Ladies, listen up, please. mx plus b is a line. ax squared plus bx plus c is a parabola. Okay. Now, just to be, just to make sure we're clear about how many solutions, there were three different cases. There was two solutions which was a parabola 
for the line hitting it twice, right, that's one solution, two solutions. There was one solution, and this was the one that kind of eluded us. Right? So I have a parabola and a line. That, oh, that's terrible, Mr. Branch. Okay. And a line that just kind of bumps into it. And our last one was no solution means we have our parabola and a line that doesn't intersect it at all. Right? Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, for a parabola and a line, we have x squared plus bx plus c equals mx plus b. Yesterday, we had butterflies and lines, right? Right? Yeah. Butterflies were, well, the line was mx plus b, but the butterfly was, was k over x, right? Yeah. So what's the difference between k over x and x squared plus bx plus c? Nothing? No. Really? Parabola. One's a parabola, one's a butterfly, but algebraically, x squared plus bx plus c and k over x. What's the difference? There's more x. Okay, there's more x's. There's more. There's a z, there's a b, there's a. Okay. Squared. But in the k over x, where's our x? The bottom. It's divided. It's, it's dividing, right? So how did I get the x at the bottom yesterday? Multiplied it. We multiplied it. Well, I have to multiply by x today. No. No. Okay. When we solve systems of this form, we will not have to multiply by x. Okay. Instead, what am I going to have to do? Subtract. Nope. Divide. Okay. A x squared. Is there anything like a x squared on this side? No. No. There you go. What are we doing, Jared? Combining like terms. B x. Is there anything like b x over here? M x. So when I go to solve, the b x and the m x are going to have to get combined. Okay. Greg. Pay attention up here, please. Is there anything like the C over here? Yes, the B. The B. So when I go to solve, I'm going to combine the C and the B. So when we have butterflies and lines, we have to divide with multiple of X. When we have quadratic, when we have parabolas and lines, we have to combine like terms. Do you have any question? Nothing. Because there's there's no X squared over here. Okay? And we'll do some with real numbers just to make sure we don't have to do it. Okay? All right. Are there any other questions? No? All right. Let's try some examples then. All right. So we're going to get page six on page 366. Now, the five steps that we wrote two days ago, okay, that Michael took a picture for us of, all right, those five steps, do you think they're any different for, for today's equations? No. No. Okay. It's the same five steps. The only thing I erased was the part where it said k over x equals mx plus b. Because now we're not using a butterfly, we're using a parabola instead. All right. So, page 366, number 6. Now, A has some stuff about graphing. We'll, don't worry, we'll do that, but it's not as part A. We're going to go right to part B where it has the, the actual problems for us. Okay. So, part B, single I, says x squared minus x plus 3 equals x, or sorry, 2x minus 1. Now, the book has jumped to which step? Uh, second. The second one, right? They said the two equations equal to each other, didn't they? Yeah. So if these are our two equations, then one of my graphs is y equals what? x squared minus x plus 3. x squared minus x plus 3. And my other graph is? 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. Okay. So our first step is to do what with these? Graph them. Graph them, see how many solutions we have, right? So let's graph them. Figure out our number of solutions. So everybody take, take a moment. Take out your fancy graphing calculator. All right, and graph them. Okay. Where's mine at? Hiding from you. 
All right, so when we graph it, we have a parabola, and it looks like that, and then we have our other line that goes kind of like that, right? Okay, let's zoom in then. So, do they ever intersect? No. No, so how many solutions? Zero, none, right? Now, if you are doing this at home and you don't have your graphing calculator with you, Okay. How are we going to know that there's no solutions? No website for you. Okay. What if that website's not available? What if your internet's broken for the day? Do this podcast. Just smart. Okay. All right. So let's let's try this out. Not graphing ahead of time. So we know there's no solutions. Let's let's play along with the fact that our internet's broken. All right. Our free app on our iPod is broken. Doesn't work today. Okay. All I have is this equation. You do that in your head. Okay. So. The long way, we're going to solve for what? X. 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 So let's try to solve for X. Right? So we set the equations equal to each other. Solving for X, we've got to get everything on one side. Right? Now on the left side, I have three things. On the right side, I have two. Which one's going to be easier to clear up? Two. The two. The two, right? It's easier to move two things than to move three, right? So does it matter which one I move first? No. How can I move the two X? Subtract. Subtract 2x, right? Now, this is where that combined like terms part comes in. What do I subtract the 2x from? Negative, negative x. x. Good. It's a negative x. It's not an x. Students will make that mistake. They'll do x minus 2x. Okay, we got to remember the sign in front makes it negative. negative. So negative x minus 2x is negative 3x. Negative 3x. Okay, we did nothing to the x squared. We did nothing to the 3. Right? So x squared minus 3x plus 3 equals 1. Right? Now to move the negative 1, what do I do? Add 1. Now what do I add 1 to? 3. Right? So does the x squared and the negative 3 change? No. No. The x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so there's my equation, x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. All right. Now this is in a form that we're used to solving, right? Yeah. So if I'm going to solve this, I can factor, I can use quadratic formula. I can't use algebra because there's two x's. Right? Now, we know, because we're playing this hypothetical, we know it's, there's no solution, so will it be factorable? No. No. So let's use what? Quadratic formula. So what's my A? 1. 1. What's my B? 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. What's my C? 4. 4. So using our song, right? Uh, three, three. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, nice. I just sing with some, some heart there. Woo! Okay. <laughs> All over 2 times 1. Does that, does that look right? Yes, yeah. All right. Now, I know a lot of us are struggling with what's underneath the square roots. Let me give you a little hint. If you plug it in to your calculator just like it is right here, so parenthesis negative 3, parenthesis 2, minus 4, parenthesis 1, parenthesis, parenthesis 4, parenthesis, if you just do that, 
without your square root. Just do that without doing square root. Just do it by itself. Then that'll tell you what goes into the square root. And it's going to work every time. Right? Every time. As long as you put the parentheses in the spots that I have them. So just forget the square root and just calculate what's underneath it. All right? To get it started. That then it's less likely we'll make the mistake. All right, if we try to do that all at once, then we might get confused about it. All right? So, what's under my square root? Negative what? Four. Negative seven. Good. So, under my square root is negative seven. Can I square root a negative? No. So, if I didn't have that graphing calculator, I didn't have the app, I didn't have the uh, the online version. Okay, and I get to here. This negative under the square root, what does that tell me? No solution. No solution. Okay. So if this were a test and you did this, work right here and said no solution because of negative under the square root, great. If this is a test and you draw this picture and that's it, not good. Okay. You need to draw that picture and tell me there's no solution because the graphs don't Intersect. Okay. If you draw the picture, you need to say no solution because the graphs don't intersect. So you don't have to do all that stuff. Okay. Or you could do all this stuff and say no solution. Okay. Travis, which question? Yeah, Jared, you got a question? Okay. So you can do either one. But make sure that if you do this, you say no solution because they don't intersect. All right, don't just draw it and go with that. All right, any questions about that one? No, sir. All right, let's try another one. Let's try. Trish, I appreciate the enthusiasm. Okay, let's try B double I, which says x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals x minus 2. So x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals x minus 2. All right. So Travis, what should I do first? Um, Good. You almost forgot, didn't you? All right. So if I have it like this, one of my equations is x squared minus 3x plus 2. The other one is x minus 2. Right? Yep. So take a moment and graph those. Why are we so loud today? Because it's a Thursday. It is a Thursday. It's not a Friday. Actually, it's almost Friday. It's Thursday. Ew. Last year's show, right? No. Why not? Michael, graph. I've asked you to graph. No graph. You done already? One solution. Okay. So, your graph looks like that? Yeah? So, how many solutions? One. Okay, that one solution is probably right there. All right? So, we know there's one solution. Now we need to find that one solution. Right? So that means I'm going to take this and do what? My equations are set equal to each other, right? Get everything to one side. Get everything to one side. So, Erica, what, do I get? what should I move first? The x or the negative 2? The x. Does it matter, though? No. no. So how do I move the x? Add. <laughs> Subtract it. It's a positive x. So we subtract x. That's the problem then, Jared. All right. So we subtract x from both sides. So negative 3 minus x, what's that? Negative 4x. All right. Plus 2 equals negative 2. Now what should I do? Add 2. Now, do I add 2 to all these? No. No, just, just my 2, just my thing without the x, right? All right. Just like here, I only, add, only subtracted the x from the thing with the x. Okay. Travis, Jared, do we need to sit somewhere else? No, we were on. Um, would that be 1? Okay. So how is it 0? 
because negative two plus two, right, becomes zero. Okay. Okay. So x squared minus four x plus four equals zero, right? Now what can I do now? We can use the quadratic formula, right? Yep. Could we factor if we wanted to? Okay. Jared suggested quadratic formula, so let's try that. So, Jared, Jared was the first one? Okay. So, what's my A? One. One. What's my B? Four. What's my C? Four. Right? So now we can plug into the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula, sorry, x equals negative b plus or minus the square roots of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? Okay, if we calculate what's underneath the parentheses first, all right, you might want to, point, you might want to punch that in your calculator like I suggested. All right. Wait, just do parentheses negative four parentheses squared minus four parentheses one parentheses other parentheses four parentheses okay. without your square root. Okay. Now when you plug that in, you guys are gonna get zero. Okay. The reason being, what's four squared? Sixteen. Positive sixteen right here, right? Four times one is four. Four times four is 16. So underneath our square root, we have 16 minus 16 over 2. What's 16 minus 16? Zero. Zero. So that means x equals 4 plus or minus the square root is 0. Can I square root 0? No. Yeah. What do we get? Zero. So then we have 4 plus 0 over 2. And 4 minus 0 over 2. Right? What's 4 plus 0? 0. What's 4 plus 0? 4. 4 divided by 2 is? 2. What's 4 minus 0? 4. 4 divided by, by 2 is? 2. So, since x equals 2 and 2, what does that mean? How many solutions do I have? One. I don't know what it means. So we have one solution, right? Now, how do I find the y value for that one solution? You plug that in first. Okay. Now I have two equations up here, right? Yeah. They both should give me the same answer. One's easier to use than the other one. Which one's easier to use? x minus 2, right? So then to find my y, to find my solution right here, we're going to do y equals 2 minus 2, which is 0. So that means my solution here is 2, 0. Okay. Travis, it helps to pay attention and not talk to Jared. Yeah. It helps. It does. Okay. Any questions about how I got that? No? All right. Now, that's one solution, right? Have we done a two-solution problem yet? No. No. So I want you guys to try a two-solution problem, right? It is 10x squared minus 28x minus 39. All right, now. Thanks, Mr. Branch, to do all the easy ones and give you guys the hard one, right? Really? Yeah. So I want you guys to try that one on your own.